Hey, welcome to Navy News, the Valley Indie Podcast. My name is Eugene Driscoll. You can follow me on Twitter at Valley Indie or on Facebook.com, Valley Independent Sentinel. Or just go to valleyindie.org, okay? Okay. This podcast, by the way, is sponsored by valleygivesback.org. The best gift builds a better tomorrow. Name a Valley nonprofit in your estate plan and create a legacy that tells future generations what matter to you. Making a gift that costs nothing during your lifetime is easy and revocable if things change. With a planned gift, you have the power to impact the valley forever without affecting your current lifestyle. Your action will inspire others to make a difference in their own way. Remember the valley. Ask your accountant, financial planner, or attorney about planned giving options. Plan now. Give later. Impact tomorrow. Learn more at valleygivesback.org. All right, so I came across this op-ed. I'm out of breath, sorry. Uh, 5 a.m. Thursday, December 12th. It's now about 5 o'clock. Thursday, December 12th. It's been a, a long day. But anyway, it was on, it was on a, a ctnewsjunkie.com, a site that I read every single day for my state news. Hi, Christine Stewart and Doug Hardy. How are you? They run that site. So they published this op-ed piece by uh, Jonathan L. Wharton. And he is, as I scroll down, he's a PhD. He's an associate professor of political science and urban affairs at Southern Connecticut State University over in New Haven. He also serves on the New Haven City Plan Commission and the Republican State Central Committee. So basically he poses the question, what is it? His thesis is that the Valley is less partisan uh, than other places. And he draws his hypothesis from uh, hanging out here, essentially. He went to inaugural ceremonies recently for the newly elected officials and and incumbents in Seymour, Ansonia, and Derby. He also says that he spent a decent amount of time in the Valley helping a local first selectman run for statewide office. I assume that was Kurt Miller running for state comptroller, right? Yeah, because he didn't go to Shelton, so it wasn't because Loretti ran for governor. But I'm going to say Miller in Seymour. So anyway... He says that some may overlook this part of western New Haven County where the Naugatuck River snakes through nearly a dozen towns. As much as local media portray Connecticut as a blue state, it's areas like the Valley that debunk this notion. He says, I'm merely a political observer, not a Valley resident. Uh, Then he mentions his experience here. And he says, the most striking moment of this pragmatic bipartisanship, he's talking about how we get along in the Valley once the elections are over, was when both Democrats and Republicans attended a Republican campaign event last year over drinks and cigars with a half dozen mayors and first selectmen. I had to ask why and how they get along, unlike the rancor we see in Washington and Hartford. He then has a couple of examples uh, that he's observed locally of this get along feeling here in the Valley. In Seymour, the first selectman publicly reminded everyone in board chambers, I think this is at the inauguration of Kurt Miller, uh, that we're, quote, quote, we're not just Democrats and Republicans or liberals and conservatives. We're 16,000 people in Seymour. In Ansonia, he talks about uh, the Middlebury first selectman saying something. He notes that in Derby swearing in ceremony, Mark Garofalo, the former Democratic mayor, served as master of ceremonies and got a hug from uh, Republican incumbent Rich Zekin at the end of the inauguration. Uh, Observers, journalists, pundits, as well as voters and public officials could learn from the Valley. It's not utopia, as there were some negative campaigning during Ansonia's mayoral election, for example. Uh, But still, there is a Valley spirit that nutmeggers could adopt. If working across town and party lines were ever possible to address problematic issues like those in the Valley, imagine what could be achieved in Connecticut. So he's saying, hey, if Connecticut learned to get along like uh, we do in the Valley, put that partisanship aside or the Red uh, 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 Sox-Yankee mentality, it would be for the greater good. And who can really argue with that, you know? Of course people can argue with it. Just go to social media, and that's what I did. 
I put this uh, op-ed on Facebook, Valley Independent Sentinel slash, I don't know if there's a slash, facebook.com slash Valley Independent Sentinel. And I just asked people, do you agree or do you not agree and why? Uh, so here's what people said. Uh, as I bring up the Valley Indy page, I probably should have had that ready, right? Now i got to type it. Valley, not not Valley Chiefs Regional School. I think Facebook is out to get me. It used to be you type in Valley, I would come right up. I've had 15,000 uh, followers on Facebook for like five years now. We plateaued at 15,000, which is, how is that even possible? But all right, I'm just now waiting for the page to load. I'm going to go down a post. I'm going to see what people had to say to this uh, professor's theory on the valley and one thing i got a, we got a lot of response from democrats because you know that's the way social media works if you're a democrat uh, especially a, a locally involved democrat and you respond to something on social media your friends see it depending on your you know privacy settings and if your friends tend to be other locally involved active democrats that's who tends to comment on a, on a given article it's sort of the one of the not strange things but you can see like in the bigger picture that can uh, be a problem but anyway so we have uh, we got about five comments first one was from Christopher Bowen he is a uh, sort of recent Democrat he was libertarian before that and now he's a member of the Seymour Board of Selectmen and Chris says it's a little more complicated than this guy says and every town is different personally speaking cable news is the worst thing to happen to small town politics and last I checked CNN and Fox weren't talking to us Neither is, news, neither is News 12, for that matter, Chris says. Not, not Eugene. Chris said that. Julie Lynn said she replied on Twitter. She says, yes, kind of agree. Alex Weber said, Republican operative says members of his party all get along and occasionally play nice with others. Agree with Bowen. It is more complicated than the op-ed makes it seem. Then we have Chris LaRoque, who is a Derby Democrat. He says... As long as we can be candid about the fact that it's easy to say things are all rosy when it's your team that's winning, I can agree. Especially in the last few years with the wounds of post-industrialization and the continued lackadaisical response by the state, increasingly pushing things like the mill rate and the education system and home values to their breaking point, the parochialness of the valley is waning out of sheer necessity and forces levels of unity and cooperation that may not exist otherwise. That was Christopher Loroch. Stephanie Ungar says, anyone else wonder why it says Kinneytown over Seymour? And she's referring to a map. And I, I don't know why. I, I'm not even sure what Kinneytown is. I'm, I'm, I'm from uh, Westchester. Okay. And let's see. Now I'm going through our ats on uh, Twitter about this. Thank you to everyone who's sending me pictures of uh, the Valley Indy t-shirt you received today. That's really cool. Thank you for your support. Okay, so we have Stefan Bohuniak responds. He says, I think it's very easy. Stefan Bohuniak is a former member of the Seymour Board of Selectmen, head of the Democratic Town Committee up in Seymour, which is mentioned in the article. I think it's very easy, Stefan says, for a Republican operative to come from the outside to a Republican-dominated area of the state and say, gee, look how great and happy it is here. Then he says, while I think Seymour currently gets along fairly well, there are tons of other communities in CT that do too, especially at the municipal level. I would argue that Ansonia is probably a top three most divisive municipalities in the state at present. So on the whole, I disagree. Then uh, Julie, who had been mentioned on Facebook, she says, actually, yes, I agree. As an unaffiliated swing voter in the Valley, I do back both sides locally and support officials' efforts to work with NVCOG, that's the Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments, to help the whole region. Efficiencies can be found through economies of scale and certain select cross-town partnerships. Then we have David Papson. He is Registrar of Voters, the Republican Registrar of Voters in Ansonia, and he responded on Twitter saying, I would say yes, there's definitely political controversy, but that's anywhere. When I talk to residents, I hear them tell me they don't give a dot, 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 about politics and vote based on the person. We're all Valley. Uh, a guy in a grumpy suit, that's Russell, he, he posted a meme in response to Stefan Bohuniak, uh, and it's a hammer hammering in nails into a piece of wood saying, nailed it. So he agrees with Stefan Bohuniak. So 
uh, let's see what. Oh, and I think we have. Oh, we actually have. Uh, I just saw that the J.W. Wharton, Dr. Wharton, is actually responding to some of these. I just gave him a follow. Uh, and now I'll, I'll go. Oh, you know, that's something else. But anyway, yeah, oh, he retweeted us. Oh, that's cool. All right, so I guess my take on this, right, as somebody who's covered uh, the Naugatuck Valley for 10 years, if that means anything, every day I feel like it's the first day on the job. You know, these governments in Naugatuck, are, or Naugatuck Valley are tough, let me tell you, a tough, tough crowd. But I, I, I do see that, you know, people may hold their national beliefs, you know, you may be a Trump supporter, you may be, I don't know, you maybe you like Andy Yang, um, you're maybe you're anti-Trump, whatever, but it, it, it doesn't play out as much on the local level. I'm not sure if those things get brought up as much, like the, you know, <laughs> the, the political party is more fluid here, people kind of jump uh, across the aisle fairly often over the last 10 years. I would say that a lot of the controversies in the Valley, some of them what plays a bigger role than partisanship in some of these controversies is just personalities, grudges. That can be as divisive as partisanship, I think, on a local level. So I think that's what you see more on the local level is maybe a disagreement starts off over policy, but then something happens and it becomes a personal grudge between a bunch of people just butting heads. And that's my sound effect for butting heads. And now in 2019, which what fuels that and turns it into like a dumpster fire are Facebook comments or, you know, the attacks by surrogates or people presenting themselves as surrogates really get toxic to use that cliched word and that's not for the greater good so that's what that's what I see locally but I just thought it was really interesting that uh, you know you don't really see too many op-eds about the valley right in general one's a lot you know you were we are kind of forgotten about in a lot of ways uh, you know I have like Google alerts for all our towns and we all, you know, I always get a derby uh, Google alert from all the, the major dailies, but it's usually something that uh, state rep or minority leader uh, Themis Claritus is, is featured or talking about. It's not necessarily, you know, something about the goings on in the days of uh, the daily life of the Valley as I, as I blab on. So anyway, I think it's really cool that uh, Jonathan Wharton wrote this piece and that he came away with that impression. And we should thank him for taking his time uh, to do that. And please come back. And please, uh, you know, go go look at it at ctnewsjunkie.com. And uh, that's it for me. I need some cold medicine. Talk to you later. For hundreds of years we brought you the news. Our life.